ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የተበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁን መከታተል ይቻላል ካናዳ ከሚገኙ ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉቅና ገኝንባቸው የፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን እና የሆስተስ ስልጣናም በመዝገባ ላይ ነን ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ብሎ ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁ አይነት ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራችሁ በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ አድራሻ ከ22 ማዞሪያ ወደ ሾላ ገበያ በሚወስደው መንገድ 150 ሜትር ገባ ብሎ ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን እውን ያደርጋል tail section of the empennage the fuselage section the landing gear and the fuse one is the power plant so the power plant is one of the major aircraft components uh, of course there are five from this five major aircraft one is the power plant. the course is concerned about this component which is known as the power plant the power plant is usually included for the engine and the propeller normally in propeller driven engine when we talk power plant we mean the engine plus the propeller so this is the power plant in terms of the aircraft so the power plant the main is purpose to provide thrust main the main purpose of the power plant of an aircraft is to provide thrust for the aircraft and this thrust is responsible for driving the aircraft forward of course we will see in detail how thrust is generated by the various types of aircraft engines it also generates electrical power in addition to the providing thrust it also generates electrical power for the various subsystems in the aircraft and it provides vacuum source for some flight instruments and in most single engine airplanes it provides a source of heat heat also is provided by this uh, uh, engine for the pilot and for the passengers is also known as normally when we talk power plant we can also call it the propulsion system of an aircraft because it gives a propulsive force so therefore we can also call it propulsion system so aircraft engine types and their classification aircraft basically aircraft engines we can find piston engines and turbine engines normally mainly we can find uh, this two type of engines we can find in aircraft one is a piston engine which is common like the automobile engine the type of aircraft engines basically broadly normally based on the principle of operation or their thermodynamic cycle or working principle we can classify them broadly as uh, piston engines and turbine engines we don't have to change them and basically they have the same uh, working operation masarata go on malkuma for example these are the piston engines so there are four uh, strokes these are called strokes uh, so here intake here also we have intake there also 
of course here air fuel mixture will be intake or will taken in to the uh, engine whereas here only air will be delivered to this turbine engine air from the atmosphere will be delivered and here you have compressors here also compression stroke compression stroke we have this is compression stroke here we have compressors their purpose is the same that is to compress the air the atmospheric air which has been entered through the intake here also the air fuel mixture will be compressed here and here combustion stroke or power stroke power will be here created power stroke and here we have combustion chamber a chamber which is known as combustion chamber and here we have exhaust and here we have also an exhaust stroke so basically they are the same normally but their working principle or the, th the thermodynamic principle which is behind these two types of engines is different and we will see them later in detail so basically aircrafts normally piston engine the old type of aircraft use this but the modern and new aircraft is modern aircraft use these turbine engines that's the old type of aircraft they use piston engines and all have their own advantage normally turbine engine is the preferred engine and uh, the efficient engine to use this place another type of engine normally there is rotate engine which is of course an aerospace engine normally for space shuttles we use rocket engines here the rocket engines the working principle is based on pre propellant different propellants will be used either liquid or solid and the working principle is the same as gas turbine engine normally. Although so there are no compressors, combustion chamber, and so on and so on, there are turbines and so on, there are no. But the working principle is it uh, exhaust is delivered uh, to the atmosphere downwards, their the space shuttle will move upward. So rocket engines, basically, they work based on the Newton's third law of motion or law of action and reaction basically there are also rocket engines but they are working based on propellant so this complex design you can see it liquid hydrogen and so on different components there are you can review it for your uh, further uh, understanding about this concepts classification of rocket engines rocket engines they can be classified uh, based on the gas they use to accelerate the rocket so one is thermal the other is electrostatic another electromechanic electromagnetic I mean. so this thermal one they could they use chemicals or nuclear reactors uh, this electro ions whole thrusters Magnetoplasma dynamics, BP, pulsed plasma thrusters, and so on. They use this is about rocket engines. But our discussion is about aircraft engines, and we'll be more focused on these two types of engines piston engines and turbine engines, especially on turbine engines. It's not again thrust. The principle of thrust generation is basically the same as both piston. It's the same for both, normally. The way thrust is generated is basically the same uh, for both the piston engine and the turbine. Engine. They both propel mass of air backwards. The mass of air will enter to the turbine engine through the compressor and finally it will be delivered. Through this, the 
trust will be generated on the aircraft. We'll move forward to the action and reaction. Similarly, this is a type of aircraft. A mass of air will be delivered through this propeller. The propeller, when this rotates, a mass of air will be delivered. And thrust will be generated, which drives the aircraft forward. So the propeller of the piston engine, or the propeller of the piston, when we talk of the uh, piston engine in aircraft case normally, it is a propeller configuration normally. The engine plus the propeller. This is the piston engine plus the propeller. That's called the power plant. So the propeller and piston engine combination drive relative large mass of air. When this rotates, large amount of mass will be delivered. Backward sphere at lower stage. While gas turbine through a small mass, small relatively, relative to the turbine engine, a small amount of mass will be delivered to the compressors. But this time at a faster rate, faster or relatively at a quicker rate. So basically, they are working in a similar fashion that. A mass of air will be drawn backwards. This mass times velocity at a speed v normally at a speed v uh, then mass. So mass times velocity as you know it will give us a force uh, or a momentum. Momentum. And it is this momentum which gives the aircraft to move forward or to generate thrust. Uh, so let's see, for example, this is a turbine engine, a single spool turbine engine, single compressor turbine engine. So there is a mass of air entering to the compressor through the intake at a speed V1, and this will be compressed into a discombustion chamber. It will be Burn it and deliver to the turbines. These are the turbines. We'll see them normally. So this will be delivered or exhausted at a speed V final. Speed. Then mass times acceleration will give us force. And as you know, acceleration is the V final minus V initial over change in time, of course, through time. So this one is force mass times velocity, mass times acceleration, which give us force. And of course, force, as you know, is the famous equation, which is known as Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. Force. So this mass will be delivered at a speed V1 initial and final at to be released through the exhaust at V final. Before the product of these two mass times at the force and that force is the thrust which you know, moves the aircraft uh, forward. In gas turbine, this is the mass emitted delivered by compressor. When this compressor rotates, a mass of air from the atmosphere will be delivered to the engine and it's the combustion chamber. This combustion chamber, of course, fuel will be added. Then, so that I'm gonna say each other maximum. Then, they are gonna rush with the best matter. Okay, okay, okay. The Jamarado. So, the compressor is the component of the gas turbine engine, which is responsible for delivering the air to the engine. So, at this point, we have to see also the Newton's third law of motion which states for every action there is an equivalent of the or in other words for every force acting on the body there is an equivalent opposite reaction this is a Newton search of state so when uh, a mass of air is delivered to the engine at 
some speed. Then we end at high compression. It will be compressed. Speed, the will be a reaction force, which may makes the aircraft or the engine to move forward. And this reaction force is the thrust. And immediate application of this Newton third law, uh, third law is the thrust generation of gas turbine engines, and of course, in general, aircraft engines. Aircraft engine, uh, when it is propeller driven piston engine. The working principle, but three, four compressor, four gas turbine engine. I mean, of course, we'll see them uh, in more detail. It is a compressor which delivers the air. Whereas for turbine engines, it is a propeller which delivers uh, air. Okay, so in the jet engine, the jet reaction does not result from pressure of the jet in the atmosphere normally. It is due to the amount of air which enters the engine through the compress. It is a proper, proportional to the mass of or the weight of the air that is expelled by the engine and the velocity change imparted to it. So as we have seen here, so it is uh, the air within this engine, the air which passes within the engine, not the air which is outside the engine, in the atmosphere, for turbine engines, and this velocity. So thermodynamic cycles, of course, we will see this also, but there are two important cycles that we have to immediately know, because the, uh, they are immediate application of turbine engines and the piston engines. For example, the Brighton cycle is the working cycle of turbine engines, and it is named after an American mechanical engineer who is known as uh, George Brighton, who invented it, which is the basis of gas turbine engine. Of course, this Brighton cycle is one of the thermodynamic cycles, uh, and it is an immediate application of the gas turbine engine, or the working cycle of gas turbine engine. Whereas uh, the working cycle of whereas the working cycle of uh, piston engine Piston engine is the is called the auto cycle normally. So the working cycle of uh, this piston engine is called auto cycle. It's also a name given after a scientist who is working on this thermodynamic cycles. For the turbine engines, it is the Brighton cycle. So in gas turbine, the combina combination theoretically occurs at a constant pressure normal. So gas turbine engine, as we have seen, it is something like that. Here is compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, and exhaust. So this process, air intake, Will, uh, we will be delivered to the by the compressor to the compression chamber. So at high pressure, normally, this uh, air will be compressed by the compressor, and it will be de delivered to the compression chamber, and it will be mixed with the fuel here, and then to the turbine. The turbine will expand it, and finally exhausted. So this turbine engine. In turbine engines, the combination theoretically occurs at constant pressure. So the pressure is constant in turbine engine normally. 
in theory normally, but practically it's gone out. Whereas in piston engines, it occurs at constant volume. The volume of the air fuel mixture will remain constant. This time also theoretically normally. Volume is constant. So the cycle states that. The auto cycle, for example, states that combustion occurs in the piston engine at constant volume, whereas the Brighton cycle states that combustion occurs at constant pressure. So power is developed in the turbine engine normally, of course. Other difference between gas turbine engine and piston engine is the continuous manner of at which in which this process occurs. That air will be delivered continuously. It should be continuously. Uh, this, will, this power gener generation will be uh, achieved in a continuous manner. Air will be delivered, then compressed, then combined in chamber. It will, be, it will happen continuously. Whereas in this piston engine, it will happen intermittently or irregular procedure, irregular bone procedure, no leak asset natural power generation in piston engine. So what do we mean continuously? So this is, again, this picture we have bring it. In the piston engine, only one stroke is utilized to produce power. Piston engine line, the power stroke or the combustion stroke is on the only stroke which is producing power. One stroke. The other three are effectively absorbing power. Power absorbed by a regular they will not produce power. Whereas in uh, the gas turbine engine, the three idle strokes are eliminated. This is stroke, air fuel, air intake, compression, and exhaust, they are eliminated. They are, no, they are idle uh, during this time, therefore. This will give more time for the burning of the fuel, and hence the turbine engines are more efficient than the piston engines. So this is why one of the reasons why gas turbine engines are has greater power to weight ratio than the piston engine. In terms of efficiency, uh, they have greater power to weight ratio than piston engines. This turbine is more efficient. There are no idle strokes here. The process will happen continuously. Air will be delivered. Then continuously it will continue uh, in an intermittent way. For example, here during uh, air intake, the other three uh, strokes are idle. I don't know. Idly on drink. Uh, air intake, other these three strokes, I don't know me on it. At the same time, during compression, this one, this one, the other three strokes will be idle. And during compression, the other three uh, will remain idle. But in gas turbine, there is no uh, such type of uh, processes. It will continuously operate. Air will continuously deliver to the compensation chamber, then to the turbine, then exhausted. So that's why uh, one reason why the gas turbine engines are more efficient than the piston engines. Camera that you want to do soon uh, one. So of course in the limit in turbine engine end, piston engine differentiates the matter demand to the way the process by itself. The way air is delivered to the combustion chamber, to the compressor, and so on, is not, these three things are not idle. They will not idle. They, there is no idle uh, stroke or uh, idle uh, process. Intake will continuously intake. Compression will continuously compress the air, and combustion it will continuously expansion. And turbine also continuously it will expand. The uh, air which is delivered from combustion. Exhaust also the same. 
the first one of the difference is this one. So they see this uh, pressure volume diagram of the working cycle. Kadamindal now. The Brighton cycle is the working principle or the ter thermodynamic cycle for uh, turbine engines. So it's simplest, in its simplest form, we can see this picture. So air will be delivered to this engine through the intake. At point A, normally at this point, air will be delivered, and this air will be compressed where to this compressor section. This is the compressor section of our engine, so it will be compressed, and the pressure will increase. So this is the pressure, as you can see, pressure. So up to B. Point B represents the point at which air will be delivered to the chamber. Composition chamber. So normally, composition occurs, we have said, at constant pressure of the neural. But this is theoretically normal. Theoretically, no Leon Michelin. There is some loose in practice normally. But in theoretically, we can say that this Brighton uh, cycle or the gas turbine engine cycle works at constant pressure. But there is a decline, as you can see. Uh, there is some change in pressure here due to some kind of, uh, but practically, this is when we see it practically. But as normal conditions, it's known that the turbine engine, in intervine engines, combustion occurs at constant pressure. So here, a uh, compression along this line, A, B, uh, A, B. Okay? Then fuel is added at point B. At this point, when the compression arises, the fuel will be added to this combustion chamber. Because air from the compressor at high pressure will be delivered to the combustion chamber, and fuel will be added at this point. And at constant pressure, combustion happens. Normally, this is theoretically, you know that. Uh, in theory, normally. But there is some loads due to when we come to reality uh, due to the machines loose at constant pressure between point C and D. They get generate between point C and D normally. C is through this one. Uh, then this word, then C to D. This is the turbine. Turbine. This is the turbine part of our engine. So between points C and D, the gas generated through the combustion expands in turbine, and mechanical power is extracted from the energy in the gas. So it is here in the turbine where energy is extracted, and then finally will be exhausted to the atmosphere and at point D the pressure will be equal to the atmospheric pressure. So this is the ambient pressure. Ambient air or atmospheric pressure. Uh, therefore this is the working cycle of the Brighton cycle or gas turbine engine in general. So when we talk of gas turbine engine, this is the simplest form of gas turbine engine. But as we will see it in the coming chapters in detail, there are different types of turbine engines. Turbo shaft engines, turbo probe, and so on and so on. Engines are normal. But basically, they are represented by this type of working principle. And this working principle is called the pressure volume diagram or the Brighton cycle, as we have said. This is the Brighton cycle. This is one of the famous thermodynamic cycles 
which have changed the evolution of uh, turbine engines. Normally, Nor, not only in aircraft engines, in general, turbine engines same nature or turbo machineries same nature like till the look if it's a thermodynamic cycle. No matter. So whereas in the piston engines, uh, the working principle in piston engines is in piston engines, as we have said, it is called auto cycle normally. Auto cycle. Auto cycle normally, and it happens at constant volume. Volume is constant. Volume is constant. So the volume of this cylinder it will remain constant normally. A known amount of air and fuel will be delivered to this uh, piston, and the volume will remain uh, constant. Uh, but the pressure will vary or will fluctuate up to. 1,000 pound per square inch, and this has to be accommodated. So, for example, at point A, normally the animation number, suppose air has delivered to this point, then piston position in relation to decrease of crankshaft. When this crankshaft is rotating 360 degrees, this shows the position of this crankshaft. So, with the changing of this crankshaft position, the pressure will increase or will fluctuate and a maximum of up to 1,000 uh, pressure will be achieved. So we can see the pressure fluctuates from here, then it will go through this. And in another position, it will arrive at peak position and it will start declining. And then this cycle will be continued. So maximum of around 1,000, 1,000 in fact, will be achieved. But the volume will remain constant in this type of uh, the piston engine cycle line. So the main difference is this one between turbine engine and piston engine working principle. Uh, the piston engine is working at constant volume, whereas turbine engine at constant pressure, in theory, normally. So this is the basic difference between the two. So we will see the recipe engine normally for today. We will see the, the aircraft recipe engine or piston engine we can call it. Piston engine Manila. It's called also reciprocating engine because it reciprocates as the name indicates. So an aircraft piston engine also commonly referred to as the recipe engine is an internal compensation engine actually. I see engine or internal convention that uses one or more reciprocating pistons to convert pressure into rotational motion. Pressure into rotational motion. Of course, it may use one or more pistons. So there are one uh, uh, piston uh, engines. There are four pistons and so on. So the aircraft piston engine operates on the same principle as the one which we found in most automobiles. However, modifications such as dual ignition systems, key improved density and safety, and cooling to reduce weight have to be incorporated into engines designed for aviation use. Basically, they are the same with uh, automobile engines when we come to piston engines. That's as necessary or as required. Uh, modifications are made to use for aviation purpose. So turbochargers, for example, are also used. Also superchargers, semi-balloon Of course, in cars also we can find these turbochargers and superchargers. And they are used uh, to improve the performance of the engine. So aircraft engines are most commonly fueled with aviation gas, which means aviation gas normally, abbreviation for aviation gas. But diesel fueled engines also 
are becoming common, especially in light aircraft. Uh, very light aircraft, they use normally. Diesel engine lift, like a Michelin, we got money. The high pressure fluctuation assisted due to the extremely strong and heavy construction in piston engine, of course. As we have discussed earlier in this uh, topic, there is high fluctuation of pressure here. So, due to this high fluctuation of pressure, uh, the construction needs to be strong. The construction needs to be heavy strong. Strong and heavy construction as well with one because by pressure variation will create destruction of the engine in a very short time or in early time. So also if detonation is to be avoided, use of high octane fuels also are used. High octane in the Nepal fuel which uh aviation line normally. This is the nature of these fuels. Piston engine will have longer life. The noroyos let me add the nature. So let's see the internal part of the piston engine. So there are components of the piston engine normally crankshaft. This is the crankshaft. Uh, this is the Connecting road. This is the P of the piston. Normally, this one is the piston which goes up and down and compresses the air. And here are valves, these two valves. This is a gap. Valves. And here is intake, intake shaft, exhaust shaft, I, intake shaft, and exhaust shaft. And this is the body or water jacket for coolant. Here there will be coolants due to the high friction between the piston and the body of the rear, there will be high amount of piston engine uh, inside the structure of this piston engine. Uh, there are different types of recipients normally. Let's see the different type of Genus. Uh, engine design has varied the modern trim industry in the century that has passed since the first power flight. Of course, uh, uh, engine development has normally changed the way aviation has uh, reached uh, this current development. So yeah, engine it gets away from the engine technologically advancement by aircraft in general, by aviation, and by aerospace, of course, by a few of them. So most engines installed in the current aircraft are uh, horizontally opposite type of uh, opposite type of configuration normally. However, there are virtually different type of uh, piston engines, as you can see. This one is a common one, horizontally opposite. Horizontally, as the name indicates, here are four pistons. So horizontally opposite type of piston engines. Horizontally are referred to as boxer or flat engines. They have two banks of cylinders staggered, staggered on opposite sides of a central crankcase. The design is simple, reliable, and easy to maintain. That's why most of the recent aircraft are using this type of engine. However, there are also, of course, as you can see in this picture, 
this is a light aircraft which is on which uh, this piston type of a region which is basically the horizontal opposed type of engine has been installed so of course there are different type of engines also we can find one is inline type of engine so this is the inline type of engine as you can see, of course, there is also a link in between. You can see the difference between the two. And I can also show you I have it. the earliest aircraft engine where, where, where of inline, the earliest type of inline or straight line, this type of engine was installed in the early type of aircraft and had the cylinders in line similar to many automobiles. So this cylinders are arranged in line normally. So the main advantage of this engine type is that it is narrow and allows the aircraft to have a narrow front fuselage. So narrow front fuselage and the normal yeah, again. So narrow fuselage, front fuselage allow aircraft to move, it has its own advantage. Can you tell me? Narrow front fuselage allow aircraft. Narrow on the sharp. Now and then Jomo, there's your aircraft in the channel. So this narrow fuselage has a track from the Nasira, so an advantage and of course. However, airflow around the engine type is inadequate. It has its own advantage, disadvantage also. So airflow is inadequate to allow air cooling to liquid cooling is required to reduce the power to its ratio. So we will require liquid cooling system as well to go on the other hand. So this is another disadvantage. Even though it has an advantage that it has a narrow frontal fuselage, it has also a disadvantage that it requires liquid cooling. So inline type of engine, we will see a video of course. So rotary type of engine also we have. So rotary piston engines were developed during the World War I for military aircraft. Normally in this design, the entire engine rotates with propeller. The whole engine will rotate. Uh, you see? The whole engine will rotate uh, with the propeller. Propeller will be here and the whole engine will rotate with the engine. In this design, the entire engine rotates with a proper cre cre creating additional airflow for cooling. So when it rotates, it will have its own advantage. But it has also this advantage that the whole system, including the piston, will rotate. So that's why we call it rotary type of engines. So another is radial type of engine, a radial piston engine. Uh, consists of one or more rows of odd number cylinders arranged in a circle around the central crankshaft. So due to the small size of the crankcase, this engine type had a better power to weight ratio than most other designs of their day. The cylinder arrangement allowed for good cooling airflow and smooth operation. So this type of engine also uh, it's called radial type of engine. So you don't need to, you should not confuse with the rotary type of engine. You will to the unit, can someone add that one. In this type of engine, the whole unit, including the piston, is we rotate. Whereas in this type of engine, the whole engine will rotate in that case. Here, only this part of the piston is only rotates about the shaft. So it's the so there is also another engine type which is known as V-type engine. Uh, so we'll see. Another engine type is the uh, V-type engine also we have. Uh, Therefore, you can see the difference between radial and rotary engine on this YouTube link. And also in this YouTube link, you can get the difference, the 
inline type of engine. You will have a clear image when you visit this YouTube. Uh, the last type of engine is the V type of engine. So uh, as you can see in this picture, these are arranged in V uh, shape. So we can have V8 engines, we can have V6. So if there are six, for example, you have this comment here, there are V8 type of cars. That means they have eight pistons which are arranged in V uh, configuration. So a V-type engine is basically the equivalent of two inline in engines. You see inline for example, but they are arranged in V configuration by a common crankshaft. The best known example of V-type of engine is the super Rolls Royce Merlin Mibar aircraft. They have been installed in this type of engine. And it was used to power both the Super Marine Sp Spitfire and the Avro Lancaster Remipal aircraft. It's a compass number one. So this is all about the engine, piston engines normally. And uh, if you have any questions so far normally, we, we can discuss. And for today, this will be the end of our class for today and the next time, at the same time, at the same place we will meet. Let's array continue. Let's see the channel. If you have any question, you can ask. Le unit mafter, alama chino, alama kafto da dari mona le bachu. Ye National Airways at Kubania National Aviation College. Tratna dare jaun yeta beka sultana ba mestat bukuzega ya farano. Ba flight operation, ba ber ramas tangdo, ba ticketing na reservation, ba hotel na tourism wa och asaltana to da darin na dergo thalan. College achin, Canada kemi ganyo International Air Transport Association ayatana. Ka Englishu ICM gar ba mesta ba ber alama kafuk na lo sultana yesat ay ganyo. Ba flight operation, ba ber ramas tangdo ya min sata cho sultana ka Ethiopia Civil Aviation ba le sultan muluk na lo. Adrasha, Ka Gola Gul Tower, Hayaulet Tadrababai, Wada Shola Bemyos Domangar Lai. Ye National Airways at Kubaniya National Aviation College. Hilmon.